This is the book of Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 20, and it reads, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of Yahweh, Bashim Yahshai, spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. All praises, all power, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash. Yahweh being the name of the Father who the world everybody calls God. Yahweh, meaning He exists. Bahashem meaning in the name, Yahweh Shai, with the world everybody calls Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai, meaning He is salvation. Baha Hashem, in the name, Rakaha Kodash, Spirit Holy. Double honors to the apostles, and elders of great Muslim who teach one who will have taught me this truth. Peace and salutation to the Akiyam, the fellow laborers, the hopeful elect, pushing this truth at risk of their own lives throughout the four corners of the earth. To the Akwathim listen, listen, learn in sincerity, and the truth and the silence, Shalom. Akiyam meaning brothers, Akwathim meaning sisters, Shalom meaning peace. Me unto you. It's your brother Shema from the GM and Strong Camp here in Toronto. Here with another lesson. All right. And uh, this this uh, TikTok clip here was sent to me by uh, uh, one of the elders in the camp, or right, Elder Malak. All right. And he sent me he sent me this this morning, right? And uh, the scriptures, right? Like we read in the opening scripture, right? Is of is not of any private interpretation. Second Peter, one and twenty, knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Right? You go in this word interpretation. Strong's G, 1955. Epilusis. Epilusis. Right. A loosening, unloosing, metaphorically, interpretation. In the Strong's explanation. Application, interpretation. Let's go to the root. Strong's G, 1956. Epiluo. Epiluo. To unloose, untie, to clear a controversy, decide, settle. Here it is right here. To explain what is obscure and hard to understand. Right? Figuratively in the Strong's, to explain, decide, determine, expound, right? So it's not of any private interpretation, right? The Scriptures. Verse 21, for the, prophecy, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, right? A man didn't get up and say, all right, let's make up some prophecies, <laughs> Right? It wasn't of their own will. Right? But holy men of Yahweh B'Shim Shai spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Right? The ultimately, the Holy Spirit had to be on those men. Right? And then they recorded what it is they, 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 they saw in the visions. We're going to read that account, 2nd Ezra 14, Lord willing. Let's read this in the NLT, 2nd Peter 1 and 20. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spake from Yahweh B'Shem Yashai. Right, so we'll watch a little bit of this clip. Right, fair use, fair use, fair use. It's for comment, for educational purposes only. Right, and we'll pause and add commentary. The people of the Bible. We are people whose ancestors wrote the Bible, and the difference is incredibly important. I'm Rabbi Daniel Bogard, and the problem when we frame Jews as being the people of the Bible 
is that we're taking a theologized, a mythologized view of real human beings, 15 million actual living Jews in the world today. We are taking what is usually Christian or Muslim theologies and framing actual Jewish people within those ideas. But the truth of it is, Jews are an ancient tribe who thousands of years ago put together these documents that we now call the Bible. In very real ways, these were our ancient tribal stories that the world has taken and claimed as their own and appropriated, I believe is the word. Deuteronomy 1 and 1, right? Because he said, uh, and he's speaking about the JOOs, right? He said they're not the people of the Bible. Right, Deuteronomy 1 and 1. And it reads, these be the words, right? So now we're, we're, we're establishing that the words that we're about to read in Deuteronomy, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel, Israel being a people before its place, right? The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. This is after the deliverance from Egypt. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazaroth and Dizahab, right, to all Israel, right? Our scriptures say, if any man speak, let him speak according to the oracles of the matter of fact, let's get that. Um, it's uh, First Peter. And, 11. and it reads, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Yahweh Bashim El Shai giveth, that power, Yahweh Bashim El Shai, in all things may be glorified through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's read that in the NLT. reads, 1 Peter 4 and 11, NLT, do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though Yahweh Bashim El Shai himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that Yahweh Bashim El Shai supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Let's read, let's look at the word oracles. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles. Strong's G, 3051. Lagion. Lagion. In the New Testament, the words or utterances of Yahweh Shemuel Shai of the contents of the Mosaic Law, right? Inspired by the Most High Yahweh Shemuel Shai. Right? Scriptures also say if, 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 if he speak not according to this word, there is no light in him. This man didn't post any scriptures. He's giving you a, the, uh, a theological uh, viewpoint and saying it's uh, myth mythology. Right? The scriptures aren't myths. Right? Revelation, uh, Romans 5, 15 and 4 says, uh, what, what was written aforetime was written for, for thy learning. Let's get it. For KJV, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Uh, NLT, such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us, and the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently. For Yahweh Bashim El Shai's promise to be fulfilled, right? So the things written in the scriptures aforetime and the times of old were written for our learning to teach us. Let's continue. Uh, and turned into religions, into faiths. And then what happens is Jews, actual real life human beings, become a part of the story of those faiths. We become, as I talk about frequently, mythological creatures rather than real human beings. 
And the problem with this, the problem with seeing Jews as the people of the Bible, seeing us within a mythological frame, is that anti-Semitism is always going to be downstream of this. Anti-Semitism is going to be inevitable. But uh, they, are, they are the people of the Bible. Amos 3. Verse 2, it reads, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Who's the you? The, the Israelites. Israel being a people before it's a place. The Lord Yahweh Shemel Shai is, on, is only dealing with the Israelites. Who are the people of the Bible? Right? A people before it's a place. The so-called the, the, the so indigenous, the so-called Latino, the so-called Negro, and the speckled bird. Those that look like the, 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 the other nations, the heathen nations. Right? But they, 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 their spirit they, they, they goes back to Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. NLT, from among all the families on the earth, I have been intimate with you alone. That is why I must punish you for all your sins, right? Because the Israelites are under the law, right? So they get jacked up for their sins, for going off. And what is, what, 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 uh, what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. Transgress means to break. Right? This man didn't post any scriptures. He's talking mythological this, mythological that. And we know he's in, he he's speaking in the sense of, of the J dub of, of the J dubs. Right? He may be a Jake. Right, we don't know. Right? But he's speaking from a from a theologic theolo theological cemetery point of view. Uh, second Ezra matter of fact, Romans 9 verse 3, and this is Paul speaking. For I could wish that myself were accursed from a Mashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Right, and who's Paul speaking about? My brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Verse 4. Who are Israelites? All right. Paul speaking about, speaking about himself and his brethren, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites? Israel being a people before it's a place. We could close the book right here. To whom, and, 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 and this, is what, this is what he goes on to say. To whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption is for the Israelites. And the glory, the glory is for the Israelites. And the covenant, covenant means agreement, is for the Israelites. And the giving of the law, the giving of the law was for the Israelites. And the service of Yahweh, and the promises, the service of Yahweh, the priests, who are Israelites, the promises is for the Israelites. Right, I want to look up this word, uh, word adoption, Romans nine and four. So what's this bug out talking about, man? Romans nine and four. Adoption. To whom pertaineth the adoption? Strong's G fifty two oh six. We are the Sia. We are the Sia. Adoption, adoption of sons. That relationship which the Most High Yahweh, Bashem Yahshai, was pleased to establish between himself, Yahweh, and the Israelites, the Israelites, Israel being a people for his place. In preference to all other nations, right? In preference to all other nations, right? We could close the book right here. So, so who, 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 who is the scripture speaking about, man? Right? This man is saying it's a myth. Psalm sixty-eight and eleven. The Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahshai gave the word, the word, these scriptures, this the the, the 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 scriptures, 
right? The Lord gave the word, right? The Lord would speak to his prophets via visions, and then they record it. Great was the company of those that published it, right? The Lord gave the word. Let's close. Second Ezra, uh, Second Ezra, Fourteen, verse 42 and it reads the highest gave understanding some more meat on this second Ezra 14 and 38 and the next day behold a voice called me saying Ezra right Ezra from the Old Testament Ezra being the Greek way of saying Ezra Open thy mouth and drink that I give to, that I give to thee, right? The angels saying, Listen, I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you. Receive it. Right? I'm gonna drop some visions on you. Receive it. Then opened I my mouth, and behold, he reached me a full cup, which was full as it were, with water, but the color of it was like red. And I took it and drank, right? And this is a parabolic way of saying. Ezra is receiving this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding, right? And I took it and drank, and when I had drunk of it, my heart, heart being mine, uttered understanding, and wisdom grew in my breast, for my spirit strengthened my memory, right? So Ezra is now filled with the Holy Spirit. And my mouth was opened and shut no more. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, because Ezra had men scribes with him who were writing and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told which they knew not and they sat 40 days and they wrote in the day and at night they ate bread right and this is this this is Ezra's receiving the, these visions from the angel right and him and the scribes writing down what it was they were seeing the wonderful visions of the night Verse 43, as for me, I spake in the day, and I held not my tongue by night. In 40 days, they wrote 204 books. And it came to pass, when the 40 days were filled, that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written, publish openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep the 70 last, 70 last books, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them be scriptures. Is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge, right? So, holy men inspired by Yahweh Bashim El Shai, right? Ezra and five scribes, right? They were inspired by the vision they were receiving from the angel, from Yahweh Bashim El Shai, and they wrote. Right? These scriptures, man. It's not a fairy tale, it's not a myth. And this is why bugouts will come up. Jake will come up and say, white man wrote the Bible. You and your sky daddy. Because of bugouts like this. Saying it's a. a myths. Let's close. Let's, let's get one more. Right. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 14. Verse 1. And it reads. The word of the Lord Yahweh. Jeremiah 14 and 1. The word of the Lord Yahweh by Shemel Shai that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth, right? So the Lord uh, uh, giving uh, uh, Jeremiah visions, right? Concerning the dearth, the dearth being uh, 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 the destitution of the Israelites. This is the, the during the Babylonian captivity. Verse 2. Judah mourneth Judah, right? The tribe of Judah, they're in mourning. 
and the gates thereof languish, right? The gates, the cities, the the the, uh, um, the gates were where the elders would sit, and 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 where the agora, the the, the marketplace would, would would take place. Anyone coming in to do business, they had to report to the gates. It was where the commerce took place, but it's where the elders sit. It says Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish, right? They're they they're, they're, they're suffering, right? Things of uh, things of ground come to a standstill. There's no more commerce, no more trade. They are black unto the ground, right? The 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 the, the, the a description of of, of 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 the tribe of Judah, right? They they are they are black like the ground, the soil, different shades of brown. You have lighter lighter shades. You have darker shades, right? You go into this word black. It, it's it's kadar. Meaning sunburned skin, dark skin, right? So Judah, the tribe of Judah, they are black unto the ground, right? And Judah was known in the ancient world uh, as the southern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right? Sunburned skin. This is giving. This is going in a description of of, of of Judah, right? The derogatory term given to this southern kingdom in the ancient world, those are the circumcision. The derogatory term term given unto them. Was was they were known as Jews, right? And the cry of Jerusalem, right? The cry of Jerusalem, Jerusalem being a people before it's a place, is gone up, right? They're suffering, right? But yeah, that's it on that. So with that, all praise, all power, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone, teach one of Wuwa, shalom to the whole full life.